pituitary tumor adventure saturday june 19th 2021 around like i don't know how to say that in english oh now 12 51 a.m well it's like close to 1 a.m Nineteen hours now. I still have diarrhea. I talked to Paul and I did nothing wrong. I was thinking what did I do wrong? I did nothing wrong. And I have even though those diarrhea attacks. I was screaming. I broke the toilet brush. I thought I'm gonna pass out. For 19 hours, you just can't take anymore. So much pain. I think it would have been worse if I wouldn't have refused the laxatives they wanted to give me at the hospital every single day. So I actually did even something right. I'm 70. I'm 37 years old. And my tumor grew in the last six months much more. It's a big one. There are others who have much, much bigger ones. It's a macroadenoma. And Paul said, I probably would have been dead by age 45 if they wouldn't remove it. So. I, uh, with the diarrhea, it's so bad. Okay, so I'm, I'm so cold. Paul and I established some things. That attack I went through was from the oxy. It was withdrawal coming off of oxy had nothing to do with sodium it was so bad so I was like never ever again doesn't matter how much pain I'm not taking oxy anymore I'm off that shit also, it slowly builds up in your system, so I already was off oxy. And when the attack happened, it was like, oh, I thought I was off oxy. Why is it so? Because, yeah, it comes much later. Also, I can't keep, like, for me, time. I sleep maybe for 30 minutes. And I thought I slept for five hours. Not because I felt good. It just feels like, okay, now it's 5 p.m. It's only like 11 a.m. Time goes so slow. So, so 
insolvent diarrhea attacks started with excruciating pains. I was so scared. I mean, I knew I had so much pain. I knew oxygen, no, of course not. But I was so scared to take Tylenol or anything. I'm so scared. Everything like that stuff makes it worse or I don't know. So again, time is hard for me, but let's try to see. I may have taken Tylenol. It started 5 a.m. yesterday, the diarrhea. I probably had, I don't know, I don't know how many events before I, maybe then 5 p.m. I said, okay, I need Tylenol. Because I was also scared Tylenol gave me the diarrhea. I was scared that oxy withdrawal I went through Tylenol helped there too. Then I took two Tylenols. At least the pain started to ease. Also, I took Imodium. At least two, maybe even three. No, I don't know. I remember when I was so sick about a year ago when we moved and I had diarrhea and I couldn't hold anything, only Imodium then helped. So I really hope that's it now for diarrhea. My back hurts so much. I was on the toilet, bent over, and I'm not allowed to bend over too much because of this. Bend over, and Paul was putting a hot pack on my spine. He couldn't press it on or so too much, just he had to hold it lay it there, or the hot water bottle. So, my back hurts so much, but now it's better, but everything's so cramped, cramped up. How do you even understand me with that stupid thing? So, not quite right after surgery, but when did it start? Maybe four, five days later? Maybe when I got released from the hospital, this constant metal taste in mouth. It's because of the blood, the healing. The problem is, it's not just gross tasting and annoying. It makes me so sick, so nauseous. I, it's like so bad. So I try to figure out stuff to mask the taste. Washing out my mouth with hydrogen peroxide helps a bit. But it doesn't last very long.
I have a liposomal vitamin C. Other ingredients here my neck also. Purified water, alcohol preservative, citric acid, liposomal vitamin C in capsules have tons of stuff in it you don't want. This is the best according to my research. Tastes actually quite good and it has a taste so I want to try to Oh, I'm so weak. I'm so weak, I tell you. Oh, I can't open it. I have lots of packages here. I usually like to dip my ground beef in it. Usually, you, you should take it on an empty stomach. But now, yeah, that one works better. I want to try to get the taste away from my mouth, or at least a little bit. It's like honey like, gel like. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to put it on my teeth, not all the way, but a little bit. On my lips. And most important, tongue. Let's see if that helps a bit. I'm sorry I'm so uncomfortable I can't look at you or put you here or hold you or whatever. I need to be like this. So the problem is also there are so many things. Let's just take the metal taste in my mouth. Well, yeah, just get over it. It will pass maybe after two to four weeks. It's just an annoying taste that makes you sick. But then at the same time, I also have throbbing pains here. Not so much anymore, luckily. Then at the same time, lower intestinal cramps at the same time diarrhea at the same time i can't barely sleep i'm so over exhausted i need sleep at the same time breathing through the nose like the air that's why this is on the air it hurts so much So there are so many, at the same time my back hurts like hell, I'm not comfortable, I, I'm hungry, I can't hold anything, thirsty and 
There's so many. There's so many things. And all those together. I can't anymore. I can't. Now I can again. I'm better. But there were times. And also, like... My legs are giving up. I have no energy. You're like... Freezing. You know, it's warm in here and... You feel... Uh-oh. Diarrhea. I need to go back. So you get like a, you don't feel it, but you get like a adrenaline rush. So you can make it to the bathroom somehow. Once I didn't make it, I pooped into my pants, into my shorts. No, it was actually. But then after you, then you're so in pain and you're on the toilet. Then you need to go back. Your body is stunned. It doesn't have any energy anymore. You can't walk. So I actually not comfortable. On my back. I rarely am. I sleep on my side. The little one fell out. I need to find it. I don't know. So. Bear with me, I'm gonna reposition. So just changing to this position, so much energy, like I'm done now. You know what, I think I'm, I found something, I'm awesome for the vitamin C. Helps with the taste because really that taste is so bad. It's not just making me nauseous. It's it's more than that. It's it never goes away. Oh, the gums. That's the palate. Put some up the palette. Good idea. Also, it's not just the taste. 
My gums hurt the teeth sometimes. So much sometimes. It's getting better though. So. I made it. I had the diarrhea. I should have taken Tylenol much earlier. I'm just so scared. You're in so much pain. You're scared that everything could just make it worse. And you're in so much pain that it's like, I can't take it worse. I can't. I will pass up. But I finally took it. So that was good. Also saw, so I talked before about electrolytes. How Paul wanted to buy electrolytes packages. Not to make our own. Oh my god. Hurts so much. Oh I think I think I found this spot. And everything is just by order and we couldn't wait. So he got me those. He got four and four. I don't remember the red ones. These are the green ones. The red ones, I don't remember what it was, but when I, no way, no. But this, it's like, okay. But I was still so scared. So ingredients. Organic coconut water powder. Organic lemon flavor, non-GMO citric acid, lemon juice powder, no electrolytes yet, pink Himalayan salt, finally, sodium citrate, organic, Stevia extract, monk fruit extract. So, not pure at all, but not too bad. And when I was drinking it, kind of masked the metal flavor. Still, so Paul made an entire bottle with one of these. I did drink. Sure, I drank more than half of the bottle. But I also poured out. But you know what? I may have drunk in half. Because there was no point arguing with him anymore. Just put it out, said, ta-da. Actually, I didn't say that. But just right now, when I read the ingredients, sodium citrate. I know about magnesium citrate that gives you diarrhea. I thought, in general, citrate gives you diarrhea. I'm gonna do research. Otherwise, can't take this anymore because 19 hours diarrhea, I want it to stop. So, the, fla the metal flavor is so bad. I asked, well, tomorrow can I have another one of these? 
so it's actually looking good because I okay it'll taste so bad so try to figure out I need something with taste to overpower it I only drink water flavored sparkling water but it doesn't really help that much or last very long need more flavor more strong and uh what could i what could i there's nothing i phone storage full so i just wanted to say i really tried to figure out something to mask that taste and I'm so glad I just got the vitamin C idea. It's the best ever. Because that works now. Yeah, also, um, I couldn't eat because I had uh, diarrhea. Can't hold anything. So that's why I wanted this again tomorrow. Because of flavor. But even though it tastes gross because of stevia stevia is just so gross monk fruit extract is delicious well, it tastes like sugar but i'm so i was so scared that's why i kept pouring some out of it i was so scared that I will get sugar addicted again. I was sugar addicted. Binge eating. And. Sugar is five times more addictive than cocaine. The only way I could get off. Was to cut it all out. Everything. Except for beef, salt and water. Monk fruit extract, stevia, especially those sweeteners. Those are so, so bad. Oh, yeah. They don't raise your blood sugar level. Oh, yeah. They healthy. I mean, not aspartame that is cancer causing. Monk fruit extract doesn't cause any, so it's not unhealthy like that. Problem, it still tastes sweet. You need to change your taste buds to be able to get off sugar. There are different people, they're abstainers and moderators. I'm an abstainer, I can't moderate, I have to because also I get sick from a, just a little bit of something sometimes but with sugar it's so hard it's such a big addiction and sugar i mean every kind of sugar glucose fructose sacrose and um, carbs it's like starches every sugar i'm not talking about uh just the white sugar oh i don't eat sugar i don't eat cake but they eat bread pasta and even the sugar in carrots or peas everything that tastes sweet has to go this honestly it doesn't taste sweet to me well Citric acid because it tastes good, maybe a little bit, but after well, I haven't been taking these the entire time. I'm carnivore. First, I really had to get off everything, and for me, then supplements like this is a supplement. I used to take a lot of vitamin C, so I used to take five of these a day. I loved them, I always uh, looked forward to them. That's what I get five a day no more 
It's a supplement. So I was so worried with this because it does taste sweet. Actually, very lucky for me, it has stevia in it that it tastes gross sweet. Because stevia is just so gross. I tried to curse less on, by the way. But I'm so scared when I read like it's all good but like when I read the monk fruit extract that it will start my sugar addiction again and I can't go back there almost destroyed me this is so people don't realize that sugar is a drug and don't get me wrong we need glucose in our body but guess what? Our bodies make it themselves. And I'm not saying everyone needs to be on a total strict carnivore diet. No. Maybe some plants are ben beneficial. Or maybe some berries or something and I like there are even people I eat some honey honey is so sweet but again every every person is different and when you have our bodies have been we've been so brainwashed and we've destroyed our bodies so much and now everything is available all year long and is modified an apple used to be small crab apple Tastes really, really fucking sour. Freaking sour. Now those apples are huge. Have like 10 times more sugar in them before than naturally. All that stuff you buy at the grocery store, or you even have an apple tree yourself, or you plant stuff, it's not nat natural anymore it's it's been modified so many times so our bodies we just everything more sugar and more sugar so we get addicted and of course that's what certain people want here read on labels read every single label from stuff you buy what's in it so many times there's sugar in it High fructose can, corn syrup or something. It wouldn't even... Why is that? I don't have an example right now. But so many times it's like... Why is it in there? It doesn't need to be. It's not... But it makes you addicted. For, um, in this food industries. Realized that. A long time ago. That... Put more sugar or something in it. People get addicted and want more and more and more. And they also get sick. Perfect for the pharma industry. They don't want you to get well. They don't make money off of you when you're well. They need you to be sick so they can give you a medication or something that just covers the real problem that just makes you feel a little bit better or like but it doesn't that, that it doesn't heal you it just uh um i forgot the word anyways that's i'm so sick i'm so in pain and then at the same time I have to deal with stuff like that. 
And I'm so scared to get addicted again. So that's why I poured about half of it out. But I'm gonna do this research. The sodium citrate. Because I know citrate, yeah, is a word for diarrhea. And if uh, I read about that, I show it to Paul. It really says diarrhea. I'm like, hey, Paul, I can't take these anymore. I can't. You want me to take electrolytes? Please make them yourself. We have everything I need. I can make it now. I'm a bit better now. Also, we just got my test results back from the sodium. As I mentioned, perfect sodium. I don't have an electrolyte problem. I asked Paul if he thinks I'm different. He laughed. And said yes, and that's why I love you. I mean, he's the one that told me years ago I probably have Asperger's, borderline Asperger's. I, nowadays everyone wants to be different, but you still want to fit in. I just don't fit in anywhere. You know, you have the ones that go against religion. And you have the carnivores, you have the vegans, you have the... I don't know, you have the... The... the uh, healing with nature, or you have... The rebels, you have gothic people. You have, like, they still fit in somewhere. Or you have people that are gay. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against being gay. You have transgenders, or you have whatever, but they still fit in somewhere. You want to be different you don't want to be the normal but you still want to fit in and be accepted as being a bit different i like being i like standing out being different with clothes and makeup photo shoots express art stuff trying something new that others maybe don't want to try or so, or... But... I got confused and I thought... I've been brainwashed, brainwashed, or like, I... I mean, not that... not at the beginning of my life, but at some point I thought like... I'm a... I'm di I mean, everyone is different. I'm different, different. I started to realize that after a while, and once I accepted it, I actually had, I loved my life, I had a really good life. Because I accepted it, and I found people, they accept me. Even though still, well, anyways. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just different and I can accept that and enjoy it or do what I can. And then after that hospital, I remember in the hospital at one point I said, you don't understand, I'm different. You don't understand, you don't understand. And um, I was so afraid, I 
made everything worse because I put in my head that, oh, I'm different. These rules and this and this doesn't work for me because I'm different. So I was like, you know, I, I'm not, maybe I'm not different. But now I'm back, I think I am. I don't know. Maybe a label would actually help. In a way, sometimes labels don't matter. Like, you just are who you are. It doesn't matter. If you, you don't need to label yourself or... Also, in the carnivore community, a lot of people say they hate labeling. They hate the labels. Oh, I'm a carnivore. Ah, you have some basil on your steak. You're not a carnivore. No, you just do you. You don't need labels. But sometimes I feel if, uh, like, my mom made a lot of sense when she told me that. She's... She just had her last work day. She's retired now. She's been working in a hospital her entire career as a hospital and doctor. So. And she's, when I told her, like, yeah, you, you know, it's so hard. They don't understand me here. They wanted to force feed me. They wanted to give me fiber. They threatened me. If I don't eat something, they're going to uh, withhold my medication that I needed and you know what you can be three and that was on the second day after surgery you can be without food for a long time and I just couldn't eat it was so hard and they don't know I couldn't eat any of their of their food except for the hard boiled eggs and they could barely bring them down and uh so I told her like they don't understand here and also because I wanted someone to stay with me when I when I took a new um, medication or a pill, like that I needed my pinabot next to me just in case, and Paul's sitting there, and then I can take it. But that's not how it works. The meds are scheduled when they're scheduled. You take them, and you and that's it. The first oxy they gave me when I woke up. And I woke up, it was so bad. It was traumatizing. The nurse gave me an oxy and I knew I need to take it. I'm not going to survive this. But I was so scared. I was so scared. It's like, you're going to stay with me, right? Just be here. Just like I, I take, I want to swallow it and she's there and just wait and... I put it in my mouth and she went away. That's not how hospitals work. They can't stay with you. My mom and Paul, they were reading fairy tales to me. Needed someone to read with me. I want a Paul. I need a Paul to stay overnight. I'm like a little kid. I, I wished I would have been a kid because they get treated differently because then someone could have stayed 24 hours and at least they didn't forbid my stuffed animals I brought 8 stuffed animals they were always in my bed I need them I always have at least one I need that just they don't understand I don't work like others so my mom said or like with yeah with the food or with uh yeah the 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 pitabut the supplements and all that so my mom said you know they just follow protocol and if you would have be they she knows from the hospital they always have special 
needs person. I don't say I'm special needs, but I don't know, maybe I am. Special needs person, not just people that need different needs or... We should have like that Dr. Gates, my neurologist I love. You should have like make like written down something that this patient needs to be able to have this, this and this that or like that Paul her caregiver is allowed to be there twenty four seven or like I don't know, just um I think this would have helped or, I didn't know and again so I feel like labels yeah if I maybe have a label Asperger's let's say I get labeled borderline Asperger's then some people would understand better oh yeah also what happened is I'm super sensitive to sounds smells well not right now i don't smell sound smells touch like when when i had when i was freaking out they wanted to calm me down and like they they touch me i was like you can't don't touch me don't touch me. i can't i know that's what you do oh you are calm down you can't do that to me you can't touch me i don't know why but and also i'm super sensitive to light now well yeah with this but it was so like this sound so i had this machine it's like they whenever they put something in me intravenously and it was done it was making a beeping sound and believe me really lo loud and it took them forever to come over and, well you just got surgery in your head and your 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 brain is pounding you can't stand that but for me it's not just like okay i'll just go through. i it it changed i don't know i can't explain it but i get i get an attack i try to so i of course i close my ears as good as i can and actually the last times i really tried to to hold on really i was trying but it doesn't work then it always ends up like i i keep repeating something or whatever and they start like please make it stop 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 or like I, I was even trying so loud as possible so they hear it and they just didn't come over for like five or ten minutes and then curling up and just like and I ate the sound is it does something to my brain it's not just a same with smells before surgery like there are certain smells I freak out and it's not like I don't want I don't like that smell I'm gonna be a bitch now no they do something to my brain I don't know but I I freak out I can't control it I'm I go crazy. I'm like, I, I can't. No, no. I. So. It's really hard to. So, and I. I I was in. I had a really bad attack. Them. So, even after they. This is that one time when it took so long for them to come over. Even after she turned it off. I, uh, I was still weeping, weeping, and it took a while to get out of it and my entire system was shocked and but I still heard Paul say like because the nurse came in that was the unfriendly one that threatened me if I don't eat uh, she knows that doctor he will stop giving me meds if I don't eat so when she came in to I think she's, I don't know, but I think she said something or like probably how I overreact or I don't know. 
And Paul said, yeah, she's borderline autistic. I've never been diagnosed with it, but Paul said that. And she said, oh, that would be helpful to know. Which is totally right. I mean, how could they know? So that's what I mean with labels. If I would have the label, borderline, autis autis borderline Asperger's. Or whatever, yeah, not whatever label, but you know what I mean. Borderline autistic, or I don't know. That would be in my file. My chart, that would be... Re so they would know, have known that. They probably, I don't know how much they know about the autism and Asperger's, but maybe with sounds and... Sm they would have known, or they would have understood, or they would... Because I told, I asked them so many times to, or like, because it happened so many times that they gave me something and then the beeping came. Uh, so when they gave me something again, I was like, when it starts beeping, please turn it off as soon as possible. I can't stand the sound. It, I, I, I am. Um, but again, just someone says that. Hey, um, yeah, when this beeps, please turn it off as soon as possible because I can't stand the sound. Could just mean, hey, it's just so annoying. Just please turn it off as soon as possible. No, for me, it's really so important that it gets turned off. It's not just like that I'm annoyed by the sound and, oh, please turn it off. No, it brings me an attack. So they didn't take me seriously. I then later I had they turned down the volume first of all. And I think it only beeped like once or twice, like twice. And then it didn't beep anymore. I think they made it stop. So then again, when it beeps, right away I'm like, ah, no. No, but then it stops like, oh, okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So yeah, that's the difference. So, so that's what I mean with labels could actually help. I mean, important labels, labels. But like, I don't fucking care about your sexuality or whatever. Like, la they're like labels. But this label would have been important if this would have been on my chart. I don't care. Special needs person. Borderline Asperger or whatever. I mean, of course, you don't want to be like... As I said, everyone wants to be different and special, but you don't want to be so different. It's hard. It's no, and but even if because I always thought if I get diagnosed or get labeled, it's not going to change anything. People still don't understand. People still don't get it. That's true. Nothing would change if I get tested and either they say yes or no or whatever they label me on. I just am who I am. It doesn't matter what a test say. It doesn't change you, actually. But for this particular event, it would have made a change, I'm sure. Also something. Um, everything they gave me. I wanted to know what it was, what was in it. Yeah, as a, they told me what it was and like, yeah, what exactly is in it? They didn't know course it's just protocol just 
registered nurses or whatever, right? You don't need to know, you just need to take it, right? But they didn't say that, but for me, it's also personality for me. I can't take something I don't know what's in it. And even if you tell me what's in it, you need to explain it to me. You need to explain it why it's important for me and like what it does and like they don't explain any, anything to you they don't i'm talking about after surgery they explained how pre-surgery works and stuff and all that but for me even more importantly like yeah so look it just you this is very important for you to take because of this and this and this and like just ex explain me and they don't do that of course they just they don't even know themselves i don't blame them they didn't no one taught taught that to them how should they know but that's how my brain works. I need to know everything, every detail. Well, it's not possible, but I I need someone to explain me stuff. Like I asked Paul about, I don't know how many times about my, so what was it that caused the attack? Was it why and what did I do wrong? I need to understand. I need to analyze. I need to. And I can't just let go, especially when I'm so sick and scared and think they don't un like I need to be so alert what they give me. What they, they would have given me a laxative every single day. I think I'm done now. I had diarrhea for 19 hours. It probably would have been so much worse if I'd have gotten that laxative and, or started even earlier. But this is, they don't get paid to explain me stuff. They don't have time. It's so, I'm telling you, I am so high maintenance. I am so annoying. I ask Paul the same thing like three times. Like, um, oh, awesome example. Charred food, blackened on the outside. I ask him, is that really so bad, like everyone says and stuff? And he told me, like, no, as, look, you can believe whatever you want. And it doesn't matter what, it's just the example I'm bringing here. He told me, like, no, well, yeah, of course, if the entire steak is totally black card, yeah, that's not healthy. But you torture steaks your steaks are still raw in the middle and just outside they're kind of black sometimes not even that black sometimes really black that's that's not there are there yeah i think he said there is no proven study that it's that bad or cancer causing or whatever so he did he didn't just say oh no no it's it's not bad at all it's that there are no proven studies or something like that but I, I shouldn't worry about it so he explained it to me. I ask him again and again. I ask him three times. And I told him, look, I know you already told me. I know what you told me. I did listen and I believe you. But please, can you tell me again? I need to ask again. I just need to and I needed to to hear it again like yeah to uh, I don't want water on this OK, 
Okay. I'm gonna try to sleep now. I just got a great idea. I'm gonna put some of the vitamin C in here my mouth got. But before I go, one thing I wanted to mention, I was so scared. Paul wasn't here and I was so in pain and had to go to the bathroom, yeah, like so many times. One time I, uh, well, I tried to sit down on the toilet seat. I hit my nose, like really here, like this, on something. Okay, it's been a week now after surgery, but I mean, that's exactly, I, I mean, I can put some pressure on like this, you know, but you can't hit your fucking nose when you just had surgery in the nose. Basically, you just broke your nose or whatever. So I was so scared. Of course, it hurt and I was like, oh, fuck. But I think I didn't mess up anything. Okay, so I'm gonna do this here now. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really surprised what great ideas I have or look how smart I am, even though I never, when I went to school, I never thought I was smart. I never thought I was stupid, but I always thought I wasn't as smart as most, as I, like the others. It was hard for me to get good grades, or I didn't understand things. There too, always after, like especially like mathematics, I. I just didn't get it. I had to ask the teacher after class. Again and again and again. Paul told me that too many times that he has to explain things to me in a different way. Like, I don't know. I think my brain just works differently. Like, it's not that I don't want to. I just, I don't get it. And it's not that I'm not smart, it's just different. I actually, later on in life, I realized I'm actually really smart. And in a different way, in a fucked up different way. But first, I never thought I was smart. Well, also not stupid, but... You know, I don't think I thought about it. Oh, I'm looking forward for that. Okay, good night. Oh my gosh, such a good idea.